So Ice Whale sent me this thing probably uh, two, three months ago or so. And instead of just doing a normal copy paste review the same time as everybody else, I decided to throw it in my home lab and actually use it every single day as my Proxmox machine. So this video isn't really going to cover Zima OS. I'm going to do a whole separate video on that because when I got this before it even had a chance to do a full boot cycle, I immediately threw Proxmox on it. So in this video, I'm going to go over the specs, some of the IO, talk about what I think about it and talk about how it's performing as my Proxmox machine. Now on their website here, if I go back, you can see there are two different models. We have the personal cloud, which comes with an Intel N100 CPU and a little less IO. And then we have the Zima Cube Pro, which is what I have here today. At $1,100, I'm going to talk about if it's worth it. I will know um, it's near Black Friday, so they're running a sale through to my cart with the discount. It comes in just under $900, which is still quite a bit for a NAS. But if you compare it to something like QNAP or Synology, for even worse specs, you're going to be paying more. The most comparable kind of NAS compared to this are the Ugreen NASs that just came out. So the newer additions in this space of network attached storage. Uh, the 6Bay one, which this is also 6Bay that I have over there, has the exact same CPU and almost the exact same price. But we're focused on the Zima Cube. As you can see, it is a cube. So <laughs> that's the form factor we're getting here. And if you like how it looks and all that, I mean, don't get me wrong, this thing is pretty. You got your six hard drive bays on the front here. There is a seventh bay, which is really nice because it has a spot for four NVMe SSDs, which that makes it really nice depending on what you want to use it for. So you could use it as like your unread cache, or I'm using it as a actual uh, ZFS pool that I have dedicated to like my uh, virtual machine hard drives, container images, things like that, or even shares that I want a little bit more easily accessible, such as for like video production projects. So that is a welcome addition. In addition to those four, there's a single NVMe in here, which hosts the operating system. Ooh, look at those fancy animations. Absolutely beautiful. The processor here is a 10 core Intel 12th gen i5. It comes with two P cores or performance cores, as well as a uh, eight efficiency cores. So I believe it's a total of a 12 thread CPU in here. And my initial kind of worry was how it would handle kind of managing workloads between those performance and efficiency cores. And it turns out it does it very well. Proxmox will rely on the Linux scheduler to decide how workloads are distributed across those P and E cores. So with high priority tasks, or if you have like a certain container or something that's really cranking up the resource usage, it should use a P core for that. And when that same container isn't really doing too much, it's idle, whatever, it should be running off of an efficiency core. Now I don't really have the highest IQ in the world, so I would highly, highly, highly recommend you go check out this video right here. How does Proxmox use P and E cores? Beautiful explanation with actual like demos and all that. Uh, conclusion is it works great, but there's really not a huge kind of um, energy or power usage gain that you notice. And a lot of the times, and me included, the type of services that I run on here are like uh, small web GUI tools, downloaders, uh, things like that. So it, there's not a lot of high performance things running. Generally this machine with everything I have going is like hovering around 20% CPU utilization, but for the architecture and how the actual, uh, Intel CPU is laid out, I, I haven't noticed any performance issues or anything like that. It's been decent. If I were to build a system myself, I probably wouldn't go with one of these Intel CPUs with the efficiency cores. I'd probably go with like a high core count AMD CPU, but this is what I got. <laughs> now, another kind of point of contention with these guys, which it's, it's really a benefit Ugh. right here. We have two options for expandability. Ah, there it is. Dual PCIe. We have four. 0 0.0 times 4 and 1 3.0 times 2 with the point of contention being that one of them is a gen 5 by 16 slot but it's only compatible with those four lanes granted it does support the full 75 watts of pcie express power so you can use it for like low profile graphics cards and things like that as a matter of fact if we go back here to this curator pack here it is going to ship with a nvidia rtx 2080a which if you do want to do something that requires a moderately powerful gpu it is a great option 
Me personally, I do not. I'm probably going to end up throwing like some more NVMe SSDs in here, or of course my little Coral dual TPU for some uh, object detection for surveillance cameras. The Pro model that I have here ships with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. I did upgrade it to 32 gigabytes, just pulled it out of some other machine that I wasn't using. Watch for what I'm using it for, I'm probably going to want more. ZFS uses a lot of RAM. <laughs> I'm keep, I keep getting ahead of myself. We need to talk about the actual I.O. on this thing and the kind of networking capabilities we have here on the back. Ignore me while I whip out my second camera. I'm still trying to figure out my uh, studio layout here. Do -boo 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 -boo. You can see here we have three Ethernet ports. One of them is actually 10 gig, which is cool, and you only get that with the Pro model. I think believe you get two 2.5 gig with the uh, base model, but with this one you get two 2.5 gig and a 10 gig NIC, which is great. I can't use it. <laughs> I only have a gigabit switch. I got some catching up to do for sure. 10 gig would have been lovely when I moved my like six terabyte media library from one machine to the other. It took a while. Additionally, on the back here, we have two USB Type C's. Those are actually Thunderbolt. Blah, blah, blah. Those are Thunderbolt 4. We do have our power in a point of contention, and they said is this is for to not have it as hot. But I do wish the power supply was internal. Instead, we get the big old brick hanging out, tucked <laughs> under my UPS, which isn't the best. Oh, look at that! We have some USB 3.0 USB A's here. We have Display Port and HDMI. So technically, and hear me out, you could use this as a desktop computer if you threw a GPU in here. It would be a pretty good machine. I am all over the place. I'm doing this video backwards as hell. Ugh. On the front, the beautiful front, we have two more USB-As. A USB-C at... Uh, also at 3.0, our power button. We have an auxiliary, so you can plug some headphones into your NAS. And then, of course, here we have our hard drive bays. Now these, you just push the button and then slide them on out like that, and then there we go. Now, these, you do have to use screws. They're not one of those really nice, like kind of just pop-in type ordeals. You do have to screw them in, but hopefully you're not having to take your hard drives in and out all the time. And then over here, I gotta unscrew this guy. Ah, jeez. There we are. SSDs. Look at that there. I got a bunch of one terabyte drives, and they are together in a ZFS pool. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's basically RAID 5. Meaning I have three terabytes of usable space and one is a parity drive. So that's really nice. So you don't have to like unscrew the whole thing to mess with your NVMEs. They're just right here available for you. Do, 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 do. Well, the screwdriver is like a little star. Do I still have it? I wonder if this one will work. I bought it specifically for the PlayStation 5. Is it the right size? Hey! <laughs> so to take the top off, you just unscrew these top guys here. Having six hard drives in this thing and trying to move it around is not light. Boop! Okay. And this right here is what it looks like from up top. You see we have the uh, PCIe's right here. Uh, we have the RAM that I've already upgraded. If I could get to focus on, not the wire. And really, that is about it. We have all of our networking right here. This right here is that 10 gig NIC. Tucked in, hidden right here is the boot drive, and that's the one it came with. It is a Kingston drive, if you're curious. Decently sized little heat sink and fan. There's, it's definitely roomy in here. And again, this is pretty short, but you can fit those low profile cards in here. One thing that's kind of interesting, that 10 gig NIC right here is connected to the motherboard with a, uh, Looks like that might be a SATA M.2. So yeah, that's the machine. I am curious what you think when it comes to the aesthetics and the prettiness. If I were to not be super into this and be building home lab stuff and screwing around all the time, and I just wanted a single kind of desktop NAS, I really, really like this form factor. It's nice. And there we go. It's all put together. So what I think I'm going to do now is put it back in my home lab, fire it back on, kind of talk a little bit more about what I'm running on it, my experience with it, and talk about some of the pricing and if I think that that's worth it. So let's, um, let's do all that. <laughs> so here we are in my Proxmox environment, just a quick little run through of everything and some other notes on how things are running. Uh, I have my vault here. If you watched my Proxmox setup series, this is the device that I made the series on and I will continue making the series. So subscribe, there's more coming. 
I have my servar, which is basically a Docker server, about 10 containers in there running. You can see it is cranked up on the memory usage. I'm only giving it two gigs and it's doing pretty good. I got my proxy here, got Pi-hole running. Plex right here is the one that does test it every once in a while. Most of my footage is 1080p, so I don't really have any problems at all when it comes to hardware transcoding. I mean, I could do, or the most streams I've ever had at a time was like three uh, hardware transcoding streams all at the same time, and there was no issue, no delay. When you go up to something like 4K, larger file sizes, you might get like a second or two where it initially has to load up and then no laggy or stutters. Uh, when you try to do 8K, that's when you kind of run into a bottleneck there. But me, I don't even have 8K footage, so my one time I actually saw it kind of lag out was a test that I would never actually experience in my daily use. I do have Home Assistant here, which has a USB device. It's a kind of, uh, what is it, Zigbee? Zigbee antenna going through there and USB pass-through has been no problem at all. So that's pretty good. If I go over here to my whole node under summary, you can see it is barely doing anything at the moment with everything stagnant. It is pretty late at night here. Nobody's actually using any of these services. So it's handling at least running everything at idle very well. You'd see here the CPU that it's rocking. Overall, this is a pretty good system. And for what I'm using it for, I could add more things. You see I have a Windows VM here. Again, on to pricing, if I go over here and click buy, we kind of saw this page before. This is the uh, Pro Personal Cloud. Again, it's on sale right now. The sale price, honestly, I would, I would really consider it. The whole $1,100, I would definitely really look strong into a uh, just building something myself type solution, again, to kind of gear the hardware to my exact specific use cases. But if this has everything you need at the sale price, it's a pretty good bet. Again, it's really hard for me to spend $1,100 on a NAS. But if you are looking into a NAS versus something like Synology or any of those big names, it's a really good deal. Granted, with Synology, you get the uh, Disk, Station Ma Disk Station Manager, which is phenomenal software, and a Surveillance Station, which is a really, really good one. Saves a lot of the whole setup of something like Frigate or Blue Iris. But then again, you have to do a license per camera. That's a whole mess. So this is a really good bet. If you want to run different services, you want to have a couple different virtual machines, you want it to you or you want to use it as an actual kind of like home lab server with a bunch of things running where we go to the base model here, the non pro version. This is also a pretty good bet at just under $700 or just under or just above 500 on sale. The N100 is great if you're running a couple different containers. Maybe you have Home Assistant on it and or maybe like Plex and a couple other little things. The N100 is going to be completely fine. So if I wanted to run a service or two and have a pretty good backup system or just a general like SMB share, the non-pro version is also a pretty good bet. Especially considering you still get those uh, six hard drive bays in that uh, flash pool. A lot of the other like um, uh, Ugreen, which also makes phenomenal NASs. Uh, the cheaper you go, you start losing hard drive bays and things like that. This, they only have two. If you go the model down, you're not losing any drive bays, which is nice. So with that, let me know what you think. Um, Zima is the same company that makes like the, uh, the there they are, the uh, Zima board, single board computer server, as well as the Zima blade. So they have other devices. I've covered this one uh, a couple different times on the channel. It's pretty good, but now it's uh, getting a little outdated. It has the Acceleron CPU. So I am hoping they update that with maybe like a, a N, 200 or something would be super cool. But yeah, that's my video. That's me covering the Zima Cube. I do hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think down below. And if you are in the market or if you made a decision on your NAS purchase, I am really curious on what you decide to go with, whether it's a build it yourself type thing. I'm interested in the specs that you chose, or if you did pick a kind of already done for you desktop or even rack mount NAS like this, what'd you go with? I'm curious. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.